Good morning, boys and girls at Franklin fourth grade. I am bringing to you another ELA lesson from the packet. It is the story, a golden vase and two bright monkeys. And all this is, is using all of the information you have already learned, all of the skills you've already had from kindergarten on up, and especially the skills Mr. Myers and I have been showing you in our videos since we started this at-home instruction. So when you read this article, it's, it's about two and a half pages. Um, you should, after reading it, reading it closely and several times, be able to use all the skills you have to answer the questions in the back. One of the things I want you to remember, something we learned way back in the classroom, about inferring. Inferring is a way to use your text clues, all the things that you figure out as you're reading, along with your schema, which is your background knowledge, the things that you already know just from living life or reading stories or um, hanging out with your friends, just schema. It's all the things that you know in your life. It's all the background knowledge in your head that you've learned along the way. And using the text clues and the schema together to make an inference. That's an educated guess, a good guess of what you think something might be. So when you read this story, a golden vice and two, two bright monkeys, there's a few things in there that I think you might want to understand ahead of time. And one of them is a story about King Midas. It says in here that um, the two main characters, Dorhe and Sanam, which is something we'll talk about in a second, were digging for gold, and, or digging, and they found what they thought was gold. And they said, we must have the touch of Midas. And the touch of Midas is something that you need to know about. And it's a story from Greek mythology. And what's interesting to me is that you read a story with Mr. Myers, the catfish, that referenced Tantalus from Greek mythology. We've also talked about Greek and Latin roots and how they can help you um, understand words you might not know. So. These, this must be a theme here. It must be important to understand Greek mythology and Greek and Latin roots. So King Midas, he was um, a kind man, and he had a beggar come into his garden, and he had this big, large kingdom he was in charge of. And a lot of people just wanted to throw this beggar out, but King Midas showed him mercy. And it ended up to be the son of a Greek god named Dionysus. And Dionysus thought so um, much of King Midas and his kind gestures that he told King Midas he could have any wish he wanted. And King Midas said, I want everything I touch turned to gold. And oh, what it was so wonderful in the beginning because he got everything he touched. He was walking home from his visit with Dionysus and he picked up a stick and it turned to gold. And then he picked up a rock and it turned to gold. And he thought, oh, I'm rich, I'm rich. Everything turned to gold until he got home and he got hungry and he decided that he wanted to eat. And he picked up some food and it turned to gold. And he was thirsty and wanted to drink and he touched his cup and it turned to gold. And when the water touched his lips, it turned to gold. And he realized, I don't think it's worth all those riches to be hungry and thirsty and not happy anymore because when he even touched his wife to kiss her, she turned to gold. When he touched his children to kiss them, they turned to gold. So he went back to Dionysus and said, I want to take this wish back. And with the help of Dionysus and cleansing himself in a river, he no longer had the touch of gold. It's a really cool story that can allow you to make a lot of really good connections when you read. Is it worth having a touch of gold? And a little aside, those of you fourth graders who have read The Chocolate Touch, it's a great story. It's kind of the same thing. It's like every kid wants everything to be chocolate. Well, what happens if everything you touch becomes chocolate? And everything you eat becomes chocolate. And you go to play the trumpet, and as soon as you touch your reed or your wherever, you, whatever that is that, that's called where you blow into your trumpet, turns to chocolate. Things get a little crazy. So anyway, back to our lesson. A golden vase and two bright monkeys. What you need to know about this story is 
Dorhe and Sonam, those are hard names. They're not familiar names to all of us. Some of us may be able to read that easily. Some have trouble. And I want you to remember as you go through this story and any story you ever read, if a name is hard or confusing, it doesn't change the meaning if you just make up your own name. Call them whatever you want. Call them by the first letter, D and S, or just Do and San, whatever it is that gets you through the text. The trick is to keep it the same. Every time you say that name, make sure it's the same so that it doesn't change the meaning for you as you go through the story. The other things that you need to remember. Is that we are going to continue to use context clues to figure out meanings of unknown words. And right up in the corner, words you need to know, genuine, recent, pardon. You're going to be looking through and all around the text, just like we learned the other day, to try to figure out what these words mean. You'll need to know what these words mean as you go through so that it helps you understand the story. So enjoy the story. It's a really interesting one. It's really good. I enjoy that. And then you will be answering these questions on the back. There's multiple choice questions. You can work right in there and enjoy yourself and email your teachers, contact your teachers with any questions, or if you don't understand what's going on, email them. They can help you with it. Have a great day. We'll see you soon.